Hi, I'm Charlie from the Poke World Realty Group. I hear you're looking to leave your old life of mundanity behind and find yourself a brand spanking new place to call your home? Well, my friend, you've come to the right place. You see, I am a highly experienced, licensed real estate agent in the world of Pokemon. I've helped dozens, nay, hundreds, nay, zero people find the home of their dreams. And today, I'm gonna do the same for you. There are all sorts of different towns and cities in the world of Pokemon, each one with their own unique upsides, selling points, and challenges. So today, I'm going to look through all 132 I'm sorry, how many? 132? Oh, Richard, you said this was going to be an easy video topic for the day. I don't want to have to fill in data for all 132 towns. Uh, well, we don't have time to write a whole new script and everything, so you know what? Fine. Today, I'm going to go through all 132 towns and cities within the world of Pokemon and use some good old statistical analysis to find out which one is best for you. Richard, you're so going to hit that intro. This video was suggested by Splurples. If you have any other video suggestions that you want to see me talk about, let me know in the comments down below. Now, at first, finding out which town from the Pokemon world would be the best to live in in real life seems like a pretty simple problem. But the more I researched it, the more I realized that finding the perfect town isn't so straightforward. I could look at something like population, but some people like the hustle and bustle of a big city, while others prefer the serenity and privacy of a sprawling rural town. I could look at climate, but some people like basking in the hot summer Florida sun all year round, while others, well, I mean, some people choose to live in Alaska, so I assume they like it. So to try and keep this video as general as possible, I looked through dozens of articles and crappy blogs about all the sorts of things you should look for in a town when moving. I got a lot of helpful suggestions, a lot of stuff that wasn't applicable to the world of Pokemon at all, and I'm now seeing three times the number of Apartments.com ads with Jeff Goldblum than I was before, but you know what, that's the kind of sacrifice I'm willing to make in the name of science. Also, I mean, it's Jeff Goldblum, it's not that big of a sacrifice. Through all that, I came out with seven different criteria to evaluate all these towns on. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, I'm going to use a method called a decision matrix to score all these towns on a scale from 1 to 10 without any personal bias. I've explained it like 50 times before, so I won't do it again. So go watch, I don't know, uh, this video if you want a better explanation of the math. Or just stick around for the ride. It's not that complicated. You'll probably get the gist of it as we go. Alright, for the first criteria, we have the number one rule of real estate, I think. Location, location, location. Where geographically a town is located can have a drastic effect on the quality of homes, the amount of businesses and restaurants and stuff, the scenery, and just the general convenience of living there. In order for this decision matrix process to work, we need to come up with a way to numerically score all these criteria, so here's the scale I came up with. Any oceanfront town gets five points, everybody knows everything is better by the sea. Any other waterfront town, so like rivers and lakes, gets four points. I don't know, our monkey brains just like living near the water for some reason. Three points if it's near some sort of interesting landmark or engrossed in nature, basically anything that's scenic. Two points for your basic town, nothing great, nothing inherently offensive either. And one point for anywhere that is generally unpleasant to look at or be in. Things like overly polluted cities, places constantly covered in several feet of snow, the center of a crater where you need to take a submarine to get out, or oh, oh, urban sprawl. But the scenery isn't the only thing to consider when talking about a town's location. Sure, that vista is great. And hey, look, you can almost see the closest grocery store way over the horizon. I'm sure as a kid you never thought about this much, but having a store nearby that you can quickly zip out to when you've poured yourself a bowl of cereal only to realize that you're out of milk can be huge. So our next category is proximity to a Pokemart. For this one, I counted the number of routes you would need to traverse in order to reach the nearest Pokemart with any water routes or other routes that would be generally a pain to cross counting as three. Cause I'm not trying to swim across the sea just to get a cheap gas station hot dog. 
the vast majority of the towns in the game have a Pokemart in them, so this would just be zero. But then there are some places like Duford Town, a secluded island with not a single place to buy things besides the gym vending machine, and the only way to get off is to take a boat to a route outside of a semi-major city, not even to the city itself. And before you say it in the comments, yes, I know you can easily fly to any town you've already been to in Pokemon, but it's actually canon that most of the people in the Pokemon world aren't trainers. They haven't realized that Pokemon battling is just a very complicated, actually you know what, scratch that, slightly more complicated version of rock, paper, scissors, and don't have the necessary badges, so they wouldn't be able to do that. See, you thought you were going to get one over me, but no, nah, my mind is a steel trap. I you shut your damn mouth! Being close to a Pokemart is all well and good, but branching off from there, the next criteria is proximity to an actual store. I mean, look at this place. You could probably get a Slurpee, a bag of combos, and a scratch ticket, but that's about it. They're not very common, but there are a few more substantial places in the Pokemon world where I could see you actually being able to buy your week's worth of groceries, clothes, video games, you know, all the essentials. Places like the Goldenrod Department Store, Shopping Mall 9, or the Driftvale Market come to mind. So, using the same method as with the Pokemart, I counted how many routes you need to cross to get to the nearest real store. Most of these weren't too bad, but I do want to point out Snowpoint City, where you need to trudge through three routes covered in several feet of snow all year round, go under a mountain where God lives on the top of, and travel through a route covered in a perpetual layer of fog, a quest that would make Tolkien say, yeah, a bit much, just to get to Veilstone to buy those Hot Pockets. <laughs> I mean, it was worth it though. Next up is attractions. A home isn't just a place where you eat and sleep, it's a place where you live. And I swear to God, if I see that painted on one of those wooden blocks that you always see in department stores that I don't think a single person has ever bought, there better be some royalties coming my way. Or I guess if no one ever buys it, then there wouldn't be any royalties to give me. Most towns in the world of Pokemon are pretty barren. You got a Pokemon Center, maybe a Pokemart, two to three houses, and that's it. And then there's places like Nimbasa that's got an amusement park, a music hall, two sports arenas, a fashion show gym, a subway where you fight strangers for money, the Battle Institute. Not totally sure what that one is, but they got it all! This one was a little difficult to objectively rank since it's hard to define what does and doesn't qualify as an attraction, so I decided to keep it simple and just estimate what each city's Yelp review would be and call it a day. You know what? After talking with you for these, um, I don't know, I'm gonna guess nine and a half minutes, I think I've gotten to know you and your interests pretty well, and, and you know what? I have this place available in Geosenge Town that I think would be perfect for you. It's a quaint little two-bedroom with lots of history and a natural- oh, oh no! A giant weapon of mass destruction just erupted from the ground beneath the city and knocked it over like it was made of cardboard! Ah, oh, jeez! If you couldn't tell from that, our next criteria is safety. Now, this can mean safety in the sense that we would think of it here, places with low crime rates, good security, and stuff like that. Celadon's nice and all, you know, if you don't mind having the actual mob as your neighbor. However, this is the world of Pokemon, so I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that safety here also means is your town built on the side of an active volcano just barely peeking up above the ocean waves? I mean, come on, Cinnabar was a ticking time bomb, guys. You cannot convince me that these houses weren't built as part of some elaborate insurance scam or something. Scoring this one was pretty simple. A 5 means the town is completely safe, and a 1 means it's... Well, I'll be honest, the odds of you dying on any given day are pretty good. I mean, I, I might take that bet. We've talked a lot about the town so far, but what about the whole crux of this video? It doesn't matter how nice the town is, if the houses there all suck. For the next criteria, I looked at the average house size of all the houses in the town and scored them like so. One for mostly small apartments, two for large apartments, three for small houses, and four for big houses, and five for exclusively Undella Bay and the resort area, both of which have literal mansions. Oh, and hey, look, one of those for sale, and it's only, oh. 
uh, might be a little bit out of your price range. And lastly, our seventh and a final criteria, probably the whole reason you were moving in the first place, because let's be honest, it's a nightmare and you would never go through this whole process unless you absolutely had to, it's job prospects. Sure, Castellia City might be an overly crowded, dingy gray mess of buildings with sewage that flows like the Amazon, but somebody's gotta work the Castellia Cone stand, and it might as well be you. Any town or city that seems like it has a lot of different places where you might be able to find a job gets five points. Towns nearby places where you might find a job, like all the towns around Lumios or Mesa Goza, your classic suburbs, get three points, and places that are literally just houses in the middle of nowhere got zero. Seriously, why is anybody moving to Little Root Town? And with that, we have all our criteria laid out and the data filled in. The next step is to do some math wizardry to make all our scales from one to 10 so they're easier to compare. And then we pick our weights. This is just a way of designating which criteria are more important than others. To keep this free from my own bias, I made a post on my community tab and let my subscribers rank all those criteria in order from most important to least important and selected my weights as such. So if you want to join in the fun and influence some future episodes, all you gotta do is subscribe or else you're not gonna see when I ask for stuff like this and it's totally free. You just click one button, bada bing, bada boom, you're getting notifications when I'm asking about freaking, I don't know, weird stuff. Weights are basically just percentages that all add up to 100 and the higher the percentage, the more important it is. Based on all the responses I got, these were the weights we came up with. And now, with all that filled in, all we need to do is multiply the weight by the standardized score for each criteria, sum it all up for each town, and we'll have a score out of 10 for all 125 towns and cities in the game. Oh, yeah, I decided to cut the Sevi Islands because chances are you totally forgot they existed until I just now mentioned them and you wouldn't have even noticed. Oh, crap! I'm not gonna go through every single score because well, that would take forever, but I will give you some interesting highlights, like how the worst possible town to live in in the world of Pokemon is Freezington from the Gala region. And I mean, yeah, I don't even know if town is the right word here. It's just a couple of log cabins in the freaking tundra with the closest store of any kind being across the sea. Dishonorable mentions also to Pacific Log Town, which is just a series of wooden huts built on what I can only assume are conservatively, several dozen long meter wooden stilts. You get one bad rainy day and your toast makes the coast of Florida look freaking rock solid. I also wanted to point out Lacunosa Town, which is full of culture. They have this wonderful little folk tale about a monster that comes out to eat anyone who strays from the walls at night, which also happens to be true. And then there's Lentimus Town, which has exactly five buildings, one of which is a decrepit old mansion haunted by a ghost. The real scary part though, the only way to get literally anywhere is by either taking a plane or going through a hike through the tunnels of an active volcano right next door. Ooh, chills. As another fun little experiment, I decided to take the average score of every town and city in each region to find out which region would be the best to live in all around. Somewhat unsurprisingly, Hoenn ranked the lowest here since it's got some whack towns. I already talked about Pacific Log and Sutopolis, but it also has a bunch of towns located on tiny remote islands at the base of active volcanoes, or Rustboro, which, well, I mean, it's not actually that bad, but working at the Devon Corporation sounds soul crushing. The best region to live in was Kalos, mostly because it's just a generally very pretty region. However, if we want the single best place to live in all of the Pokemon world, we need to look elsewhere because it's not the twinkling streets of Lumios or the seaside Comarine City, though both of those scored pretty high. Nor is it the tropical commercial hub of Haoli City or the rising Driftvale City that Clay has recently gentrified the hell out of. No, if we want the best place to live in the Pokemon world, look no further than Hoenn's Slateport City. Yep. The same region that wants people to live under a thick layer of volcanic dust also has a beautiful seaside city with a massive public beach, a sprawling outdoor market, and plenty of large homes just waiting for you. Looking for some entertainment? Look no further than the Oceanic Museum, which was only briefly taken over by a radical environmentalist group once, 
or the local contest hall. Looking for jobs? The Harbor, Shipwright, Pokemart, and Outdoor Market are calling your name. It'll feel like you're on vacation every day of the week. And assuming that one poke, whatever the hell the currency in this world is called, is equal to about one yen, and the rent for a seaside apartment is roughly equal to that of our own real world, then all this and more can be yours for the low, low price of just 250,000 to 300,000 poke dollars a month, which is just over 21 times more than you would get from defeating Steven Stone and becoming the strongest trainer in the country. And that's a low estimate. It's probably even more than that. <laughs> the housing market is just real fun. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.